So, in this lecture, uh, we have already seen SI engine fuels, what type of fuels uh, the fuel constituents are. Uh, we have also seen uh, how do you characterize a particular fuel in terms of its knocking characteristics. Uh, and we have also seen a CFR engine uh, in which uh, you can actually test the blends of fuels uh, and uh, try, to, uh, try to get there. Uh, let us say octane number between the scale 0 to 100 let us say. So, we have seen all this. Now, there are also other additives which are added to an SI engine fuel uh, which we will be taking up in this class and we will see uh, how some of the other additives help uh, in designing the fuel for example and trying to make it uh, good for the combustion of the engine, the life of the engine. Mind you, uh, the, the economy of course is important on one side, the fuel economy is extremely important, but the, the, the wear and tear characteristics of the fuel uh, of the engine, uh, the, the lubrication oil and its uh, let us say dynamics uh, happening with the fuel and the burning inside, uh, inside the combustion chamber for example, uh, the life of the fuel handling system, the storage, the fuel storage. Uh, characteristics. So, there are so many, so many characteristics of the fuel which we have seen in the earlier lectures. So, some of the additives also help us uh, design the fuel in such a way that they improve these parameters. So, let us see uh, some of the other additives of SI engine fuels. So, uh, one, one concept which is, uh, which is now uh, uh, quite prevalent is called as reformulated gasoline. So, reformulated gasoline or RFG is manufactured by refiners to help reduce emissions. So, there are several additives which are added. The gasoline refiners reformulate the gasoline by using additives that contain at least 2 percent oxygen by weight and reducing the additive benzene to a maximum of 1 percent by volume. So, oxygen addition of oxygen helps us in redu reduction of the emission which we will see later on how it helps. And of course, we know that aromats are pretty good. Uh, on one side as uh, enhancers of uh, octane rating, but then benzene compound also when it is released in the atmosphere also uh, has detrimental effect on the environment. And we will see how uh, in the later lectures when we study emissions, uh, how benzene uh, for example, uh, must be limited. So, uh, the two other major changes done in the refineries when they reformulate this petrol, they reduce the light compounds and they re also reduce very heavy compounds. So, you have seen the distillation curve and we have seen that there is low temperature volatility, mid temperature volatility and high temperature volatility. So, naturally if it is too much, too much of light compounds are there then the, the losses are the, the losses are high. Uh, you may have starting issues uh, if, uh, with the engine, there will be lot of volatile compounds and also storage becomes an issue, the read vapor pressure becomes an issue. So, there are several interrelated issues and there and similarly very heavy compounds are also not very easy to burn uh, inside an SI engine, the available time is very little and as you know, as you know uh, depending on the carbon chains, the rate of reaction is dependent on it and eventually of course, the octane rating is also dependent on the type of blend which you use. So, usually uh, gasolines are reformulated uh, in the refineries when before they are shipped uh, to the petrol pumps uh, for uh, achieving better combustion characteristics. Then you can also do oxygenated blending as I was telling you. Uh, for example, addition of alcohol for example. So, oxygenated blending adds oxygen to the fuel in oxygen bearing compounds uh, such as uh, methyl or ethyl ternary butyl ethers for example. You can have ternary amyl methyl ethers, you can add ethanol, you can have other ethers and alcohols. And so, essentially they reduce the amount of carbon monoxide and unburnt fuel in the exhaust gas, thus reducing smog. Uh, so, we will discuss uh, in great detail the smoke formation in the later half of the course. Uh, but uh, so, in many areas oxygenated blending is mandated to reduce smog and other airborne pollutants. So, uh, what is important for you to understand is that if there is additional oxygen within the fuel itself through the mixing of alcohols for example or ethers for example, uh, then the requirements of supplying additional oxygen from outside also reduces. And it also makes sure that uh, the, uh, the, the, the chances of carbon monoxide uh, being emitted or unburnt fuel going out uh, in the atmosphere also gets reduces because of the oxygenated blending or blending of these particular oxygen containing uh, hydrocarbons uh, in the uh, primary fuel uh, let us say constituents. This also boosts the octane number. 
it is good for high altitudes that is reduce CO emissions. The amount of oxygenate is also limited. You can't add that you can you can't say that you, you can keep on adding and you will always get benefits. Uh, usually, uh, if a lot of oxygen is present, then mixture leaning may take place. So, your fuel air equivalence ratio may become less than 1 and you are actually, uh, you start running lean which is also not very good for the, for the SI engine. Uh, the NOx emissions also increase, it, ha uh, it has been shown by addition of uh, oxygenated blending uh, additives. It has adverse effects on fuel handling system because now the fuel contains oxygen. Uh, so, there may be oxidation and corrosion problems. Uh, so, this particular uh, oxygen which is contained inside the fuel, uh, it can react with the storage material, it can react with the fuel line, it can react with the pumps for example uh, and cause corrosion etcetera problems. Uh, sometimes oxygenates also increase fuel volatility leading to hot weather problems and increased emissions due to volatility. Uh, so, emissions are not only uh, the, 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 the detrimental effect of emissions is not only after the combustion, but even unburnt fuel, uh, you know, going uh, uh, through the tanks, uh, through the fuel line, going in the atmosphere uh, is also not desirable and therefore, we would like to have unburnt fuel also should not directly go. Uh, typical addition is limited to about 2.5 to 3 percent by mass of oxygen in the fuel. So, by adding all these compounds, your total oxygen uh, which is going into the fuel mixture uh, should not exceed typically 3 percent by mass. So, here for example, there is a photograph uh, which, uh, which shows uh, that it is an unladed petrol, it has 10 percent ethanol and the, the petrol uh, let us say has a, a, a pump uh, octane rating of 87. Okay. Here you have E85, that means it has 85 percent of ethanol in it. Uh, and naturally ethanol will increase the octane rating and therefore, the ma ma maximum R plus M by 2 uh, or the pump octane rating is about 100. So, this fuel tank indicates that the gasoline is blended with 10 percent ethanol and can be used in any gasoline vehicle. E85 contains 85 percent ethanol and can only be used in vehicles specifically designed to use it. So, therefore, because it is uh, so much of oxygen is will be present, it is act almost burning like al uh, pure ethanol it is 85 percent ethanol. So, naturally the combustion chamber design, the spark plug, the amount of oxygen or uh, amount of air which is blended into this type of fuel is has to be different. So, the air handling uh, and the fuel handling of this and the combustion chamber design of ethanol burning uh, engines will be different than uh, let us say uh, uh, th those fuels which do not contain too much of uh, ethanol. So, uh, you can more and more alcohol is being used and uh, addition of alcohol for example, it absorbs moisture in the fuel tank. Uh, about 10 percent of alcohol added to gasoline raises the octane rating by about 3, 3 to 5 points for example. Alcohol also cleans the entire fuel system. Uh, it is uh, actually like a solvent, it acts like a solvent. The alcohol reduces CO emissions because it contains oxygen. So, these are some of the advantages of addition of alcohol. The disadvantages are the use of alcohol can result in clogging of the fuel filters with dust and other debris clean from the fuel tank, pumps and lines. So, essentially since it is a solvent, it is a very good solvent and actually alcohol is also used in laboratories for cleaning for example. So, it can dissolve a lot of dirt and other debris and then eventually uh, all this debris after the fuel burns uh, can actually go into, uh, into several other places and clog the system. The alcohol raises the volatility of the fuel. So, this can cause hot weather di drivability problems. So, naturally if there is a lot of volatile compounds, there will be vapor formation in the fuel lines uh, and it will be very difficult, uh, sometimes it becomes difficult to run such type of fuels in very hot conditions. Alcohol reduces the heat content of the resulting fuel mixture. So, if you compare, if you go to your thermodynamics books and if you see uh, the heat, uh, the heat of uh, let us say reaction. Uh, or the heat of combustion of alcohol and you compare that with other uh, let us say fuels, typical fuels which are there in a, in a petrol mixture for example, uh, you will see that it is roughly half. Okay. So, naturally you are adding alcohol on one side, uh, you are trying to increase the octane rating, you are trying to reduce the emissions, but naturally the per unit kilogram of the fuel which you have, now you have lesser amount of heat available. So, naturally the amount of inventory which you are carrying has to be higher 
if, if you have to uh, let, let us say get certain power from the engine. So, therefore, on one side uh, there are advantages and on the other side there are disadvantages also. Then alcohol as, as you know it absorbs water and this water can get separated out uh, from uh, this fuel uh, especially at as the temperature drops. So, when the temperature goes down the adsorbed water can come out from uh, this fuel and this may lead to several other problems uh, in, in, in starting and running of the engine for example. Then another uh, important very important uh, let us say uh, element uh, which uh, causes a lot of problems including emissions including corrosion etcetera is sulphur. Okay. So, sulphur is there are advantages also of sulphur, but uh, in, in, in the last 20 years uh, the sulphur content has almost becoming to trace as far as gasoline is concerned. So, sulphur is detrimental, uh, the, the, it, it deactivates the catalytic converters. At this stage you do not know what is a catalytic converter, but I can tell you that uh, after the exhaust gases come out from the engine, you can uh, convert the unburnt uh, let us say carbon monoxide for example, uh, into carbon dioxide outside the engine before it is released to the atmosphere. So, rather than releasing CO, uh, you can actually burn it to CO2 for example. Uh, some of the catalytic converters can also or after burners, you can also burn the unburnt fuel for example. But then uh, this catalytic converters usually have noble metals. Uh, okay, rhodium, uh, uh, platinum, palladium, these type of uh, let us say noble metals are there uh, which actually help as catalysts and when sulphur is present or sulphur dioxide is present, uh, they usually deactivate and therefore, uh, presence of sulphur uh, is extremely detrimental for the health of the catalytic converter. Usually catalytic converters are a little expensive part of the total exhaust system uh, because they contain these uh, let us say noble metals. Uh, or, or, or uh, uh, let us say specialized materials, uh, their honeycomb structures are also ceramic structures. So, they, they are usually uh, let us say uh, uh, expensive and we would like to preserve their life as much as possible. Uh, also, uh, you will study in the later part that we, we uh, to, to, to get the type of exhaust gases which are coming out to analyze them there are lambda sensors or oxygen sensors which are placed in the exhaust line and the sulphur also, uh, also is detrimental for these sensors. So, we will study these in the later part of the course. It usually is dealt with fuel after treatment plants. So, uh, after the fuel let us say you have to remove this sulphur uh, in the after treatment plants. The HC emissions may increase significantly with the rise in sulphur content due to catalytic poisoning that is what I was telling you. So, the unburnt hydrocarbons will start leaving the engine. Uh, because uh, let us say there is sulphur and the this sulphur has actually poisoned the catalytic converter and this catalytic converter was supposed to burn this HC uh, let us say or carbon monoxide uh, into uh, complete combustion before it was released to the atmosphere, but now it is not functioning well uh, because the sulphur content of the fuel has actually uh, deactivated it. So, this is another problem. One of the problems by reducing sulphur is that it reduces the lubricity of the fuel especially in diesel fuels. So, uh, in the diesel fuels when we will deal with diesel fuels you will see that the diesel fuel actually has to be sprayed uh, through a fuel pump a high pressure is generated and you make a diesel spray. So, during that this sulphur actually is helpful, uh, uh, it, 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 it uh, reduces the lubricity of the fuel. Okay. So, it, uh, the sulphur is actually helping in the lubrication properties, but if you reduce too much uh, then naturally the lubrication property of the sulphur reduces. Uh, the, the present norm is to go towards ultra low sulphur fuels that is what I was telling you that uh, since sulphur. Uh, from an emission perspective, uh, also from corrosion perspective, the sulphur dioxide can react with steam and form sulphuric acid for example. So, many acidic compounds are formed uh, because of the presence of the sulphur and nowadays in gasoline fuel, uh, the sulphur contents mo more and more stringent norms are coming and we are heading towards less than 10 ppm in fact uh, of, of sulphur fuels uh, in the present day uh, let us say petrol which is available. Then there are other impurities also which come in the in the in the fuel uh, when they are uh, coming out of the refineries. For example, silicon uh, 
naturally, it, the, the petroleum products are coming from, from earth and there is uh, quite some silica in, in, in the whole process uh, and therefore, you get to, you want to get rid of the silicon uh, which causes failure of, for example, oxygen sensors. It also increases, it's a very hard substance. So, if it goes inside the combustion chamber, uh, then the, 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 it increases the wear uh, uh, of, of, of the metallic parts. Uh, which are rubbing against each other. Then phosphorus for example, typically in lead containing gasoline also comes from lube oil, uh, lube oil additives, we will discuss it in a later class uh, and it affects the catalytic converter efficiency for example, it also helps, it also goes on uh, to, to, to do uh, a lot of harm in terms of poisoning of the catalyst. Then of course, there is water uh, in, in, in the fuel and it is in the form of dissolved water or it can also, uh, it can also be uh, be present as an impurity, uh, for example, and then it leads to blockage of fuel lines, corrosion, icing, etc. So there are several, uh, uh, let's say, edit. Uh, there are several elements uh, in a fuel uh, which needs to be removed uh, or which needs to be controlled, uh, not only from the emission perspective. Uh, but also from lubrication perspective, from the life of the engine in terms of wear and tear, in terms of corrosion, uh, in terms of uh, let us say the, 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 their interaction with the catalytic converter and trying to reduce the efficiency of the catalytic converter. So, several elements need to be controlled. So, there are, uh, you must have seen Euro 3, Euro 4 or Bharat 2, Bharat 3, Bharat 4 norms and these norms. Uh, if you uh, if you check these norms, that means if we are following right now Bharat 3, for example, uh, then uh, this but the government policy specifies how much sulphur is maximum allowed, how much blending can be obtained, how much water content is is allowed, how much phosphorus is allowed, and things like that. So these standards uh, the refineries have to meet. Uh, if they have to sell uh, this particular blend in a particular country. So, every country follows a particular norm and uh, the, ox the, the, uh, the impurities are controlled uh, so that uh, eventually the life of the engine, the emission and the other characteristics are uh, sort of taken care of. So, in this lecture, uh, we have seen actually more or less the gasoline fuels okay, and uh, uh, the, the characteristics of the gasoline fuel uh, and the related characteristics. Uh, of uh, let us say the, comp the, the constituents of the fuel uh, so as to understand uh, how petrol burns uh, and this will help us in understanding how petrol burns uh, and eventually when we will study the combustion of these fuels, uh, we will try to uh, sort of understand uh, how these fuel characteristics affect the combustion dynamics of an engine.